Welcome to the Blue Cafe. We offer stories of infidelity, betrayal, and redemption. Please like and subscribe. Cheers. Now, on to today's story. Doing what I don't want to do. Rant. This is going to be a very long post. None of you need to read it, but my therapist recommended I get everything out in a timeline style manner and what better place? Month 1 you tell me about the affair. I'm crushed. In disbelief. My wonderful, amazing wife, mother of my child, another on the way, would not do this to me. I feel disconnected from reality you say. I want to be with you and work on things. I can't imagine being without you. Of course I forgive you, I want to work through things too. Less than a week after you tell me, I wake up and you're gone. You've gone to visit him. You need closure. I am at a loss but continue to push forward with marriage counseling. Month 2, by this point, you've reached out to him four times to my knowledge. I don't understand it. You wanted to work on things. It's all too much to handle emotionally. I broke you, and I can't fix you. It's just too hard on me you'd say. I swallow my hurt and try to take care of you. You're pregnant, we had lost a baby to miscarriage, my wife needs help. We spend the days together going places with our daughter every day. Anytime I talk about my emotions, I'm having a hard time today, I'm really struggling with the thought of X Y Z, you push me away, run away, I wake up to notes from you being gone. Month 3, I continue to find you talking to him. This man that's apparently more lovable than me. 10 years your senior, father to a half dozen kids from several different women, a man that threatened me and your children if I ever told his longtime girlfriend about the affair. Apparently he's just hard to let go of. I try to talk to you about the hurt. You tell me if I do, you'll hurt me worse. My only regret is that I didn't get to have sex with him more. Our daughter is born into this mess. Month 4, I wake up to you gone. I check your location, his workplace, ask you about it, I just needed to to on a drive, I check your phone I'm sorry we couldn't do more, I miss your taste, I ask you to leave, go stay at your mom's, you freak out, tell me you don't love me, you never loved me, I try to stay away from you as much as I can, I'm worried for your mental health, we're sharing the kids. You tell me you're going to give me a chance to date you. This can't be real. My high school sweetheart, my best friend, this can't be real. Our separation seems to be working, you seem to start missing me. You ask me to come over for Thanksgiving. I do. You're still talking to him. I have to beg you to stop texting him in front of me. Month 5, I go no contact. It seems to cause you to spiral. You want to work on things. Let's give it a go. I haven't been right in the head. I'm so desperate to be with the woman I love and believe that none of this is real, I agree. You move back home two weeks before Christmas. We have a wonderful couple weeks. You don't want to go to marriage counseling anymore, but things seem to be going alright. Day after Christmas, I see that you've installed the Xbox Live app on your phone. You're messaging him on there now since we changed your number. I ask you about it while you're in the shower. You lose it again. I go cry upstairs where you can't hear. I decide to take a shower, I hear my daughters crying hysterically. I come downstairs and you're gone. I manage to get a hold of you after 8 hours of being gone, you're not coming home for a while. You're gonna cold turkey your antidepressants. You don't want to live anymore. I called the police. You end up on the missing persons list. I spent two days morning till night looking for you. You turn yourself into the hospital. Month 6, you spent 10 days at the mental health facility. 10 days I'm talking to you on the phone. Taking care of our daughters. Bringing our girls to sit in the parking lot outside the facility so that we can be on the phone and you can see them, even from afar. Hopefully my wife gets the help she needs there. Everything is gonna be okay. You come out of the facility and come home. 
you've made a bunch of unhealthy friendships in the facility, you're texting and calling people throughout the day that you met in there, but I let it be. You're out two weeks and I come home from work long after you've gone to bed to find that you left your phone with the Xbox app open a conversation between you and him again. You miss him. You have clothes that smell like him that have slowly lost the scent and that makes you sad. I'm so numb. I ask you to leave again. Month 7, Separation Number 2. I want to work on this, but if you ever talk to him again, this is over, I say. Let the separation begin. Less than a week into the separation, you're over at his workplace. The library. You're visiting the library with your new friend T from the mental health facility. I call you to ask what the deal is. You freak out at me I'm not talking to the guy. How could you make such a big deal about this? I let it be. You come over on your birthday because I called you crying. I said this was hard and I didn't know if I could take it anymore, I need it to end. You come over with divorce papers telling me you always rush things, trying to force me to make a decision right away. I cry and cry and say why are you doing this? I still don't believe any of this is happening. You mock me, tell me if you don't stop crying I'm going to hit you in the ducking face. You're a woman and I can't imagine what people would do to me if I said anything like that to you. But when you say it, you're just going through a rough time. Month 8 I've been taking care of myself to the best of my ability. We're sharing the girls. You get half the week than I do. It's hard. I love my daughters so much and I hate being apart from them. We've been apart a full month, nearing two by the end of March and you haven't been talking to him you want to work on our marriage. I request that we move to a new city on the other side of the metro area to get away from all the painful reminders and to have a fresh start. You agree and so we find a wonderful little house together to rent. Plus, you're pregnant. There's no way it isn't yours, why would you even doubt that? Month 9, Moving Day. Your brother casually tells me as we're moving, she never stopped talking to him. I blocked him on her Xbox Live. He keeps asking her to leave him alone but she keeps sending him messages. I don't feel anything. Maybe he's lying? We're in our fresh start house less than a week. Our daughter is sick and we're taking care of her. I ask what time it is. You show me your phone. Xbox live notification at 3 am. I don't care, this isn't real. I set my alarms for the morning, you see me on my phone and take it from me I don't like you talking to people every time I make a mistake. I was just setting an alarm. Two more weeks pass. I'm just trying to avoid you. You work days. I work nights. This isn't real life. We're putting the girls to bed. You look all dressed up to go out somewhere. You going somewhere tonight? I need to get out of the house. You say. I guess I made the wrong face because you stormed out. I find you in the bathroom and ask if you're okay. You tell me you feel trapped and I tell you I can relate. I explain that it sucks being cheated on, then having to take care of you, not getting to have my own hurt or emotions, chastised every time I feel something. You lunge from the bathroom, begin hitting me over and over. I fall on the bed. You turn off the lights and hit me more. I call the police. You go to jail. Your family calls me, you ducking idiot, what did you do? What did you say to her to make her hit you? Now what genius? She's in jail and it's your fault. I just cry. Eventually though, I lay it all out and yell back. Of course my mother-in-law doesn't mention all the awful stuff she said to me, she just tells everyone I yelled at her. My wife is out of jail now. Trial is next month. I still believe you have some sort of mental health problem. That's the only way this past year has made sense compared to the last decade. I found her crying in the closet. I asked what was wrong. You never apologized for calling the police on me. I'm shocked. She doesn't care about me one bit. She's cheated on me, verbally and emotionally abused me for nearly a year, now physically abused me and she's crying not because she can't believe what she's done to me, but because I haven't apologized for sending her to jail. I talked to an attorney a little over a month ago. 
They want me to take everything you have, have you pay me alimony, child support etc. I don't want any of that, I just want this to be over. I love my wife, or who I thought she was. I want to do everything I can to take care of my little girls. But I can't keep letting this go on. She doesn't care about me one bit. She's told me a million times she doesn't love me. She doesn't even bother to pretend to say it anymore. I'm a big tattooed man being destroyed by a tiny woman. The only thing I ever wanted in life, my wife, my family, you know it's all I want and you hold it hostage over me. I don't want to divorce, but you've never apologized, never stopped cheating, gaslight, blame shifted, never once actually cared. Save me. I'm in hell. Edit, post is up for 5 minutes and I'm already getting down voted to hell. I know you probably all think I'm spineless. Probably right. It's hard accepting that the woman you've been madly in love with for a decade is a monster. Cut me some slack. Didn't think on a support group subreddit I'd so quickly get shit on for be open about being torn apart by someone you want to trust. Edit 2, I've read through as many of the replies as I can. I'm gonna try to get back to a lot of you and I appreciate the PMs of support as well. Last night I sat down with her and went over the divorce papers and started filling them all out. I'm sticking to it and if she won't do it amicably, which I'm sure she won't, then I'm going to resume activity on the lawyer. I know a lot will say just go to the lawyer now. But honestly I'm broke and the $3,500 for retainer alone is somewhat out of my budget. My wife is a shopping addict and we spent $10,000 throughout COVID on marriage counseling. Not to mention my work has been impacted heavily due to COVID. I'm new to this. Getting ready to leave. So I posted my story over on r slash surviving infidelity and many of the users over there said that it sounded like my wife has BPD. Post for the curious. Reading through this sub makes me want to cry. Every single post on here is so relatable to how things have been in my life over the last year. I'm not sure if I have any questions really or just want to vent my newfound information because I'm still in such a place of disbelief, yes, even after a year. Changing how is it that I went through nearly a decade of relationship with 5 years of marriage, and the shit has only now started to hit the fan? My wife was amazing, made me feel like I was on top of the world. We had our issues at times, but she was the love of my life. Now she so easily says she doesn't care if she ever sees me or our daughters again. Gaslighting she had an affair. My only request was that she stop going to visit his workplace. But apparently that means she needs to stop having friends, never leave the house, just be trapped at home all day. She has this way of painting what I feel to be perfectly logical and reasonable requests as insane extremes that make me doubt myself. The flip this woman has emotionally and physically abused me. Said the worst things imaginable to me. But then has the ability to just come home from work and eat dinner with me laughing and making inside jokes. We watch our favorite shows together. It feels like everything is okay again. She says stuff like I really do love you. Like life is happy again. Then the switch comes. Cue hell suddenly the evening has gone from seemingly a place of love and fun to manipulation. Emotion I often find her crying. I try to comfort her. Take care of the woman I love. Last time I asked her why she was crying, after an hour of holding her, she finally told me that she was upset that I hadn't apologized yet for calling the police on her, she spent the night in jail for domestic violence after beating me to the ground. Anytime I think she's crying over what she's done to cause hurt, they're really only ever tears for herself. There's no empathy. If she manages to make me cry, she says stuff like you better stop crying or I'm going to start punching you in the ducking face. But when she cries I'm supposed to be there to be her rock. The lies I'm not sure how common affairs are within the world of BPD, but god I'm so tired of the lies. She hasn't talked to him in weeks. I know it isn't true. I'll tell her I know she talked to him a week ago at the very least, I saw the messages. Well yeah, but not since then. I don't believe anything she says anymore. 
It all just feels like a ploy, every compliment, every act of love, it feels like a tool to work under my skin and keep me longer. Trying to let go this is the hardest part for me. I think maybe you guys will understand more than over on the infidelity subreddit. I met my wife when I was 17. Over the last 9 years we've been on adventures, road trips, spent every moment possible together just in love. We brought two wonderful little girls into the world, soon to be three, although I don't know if I'm the daddy of the new baby. Somehow though, as if overnight, you're this monster. I've stuck through this for so long because I keep telling myself you're sick and need help and I can't abandon the love of my life while she's struggling. But were you always this way and just really good at hiding it? We had a relatively stress-free marriage, but then the miscarriage, Covid, and me suddenly have grief and depression of my own and it seems like you shed its skin. My hurt, my emotions, they're inconvenient to you. There's no ounce of pain or anguish I've felt over the last year that you haven't tried to convince me was my fault. How do you tell me your only regret is that you didn't get to have sex with him more referring to your affair partner, and then go throughout the day acting like you didn't say that? How do you beat me, manipulate me, abandon me and our daughters for days at a time, all because I'm too much to handle and then come back like nothing happened? Me being too much to handle is me expressing, yeah I'm sad today with everything that's been going on. And that gives you the right? Which one is the real you? Or did I ever even know the real you? Oh my god, this lady put you in a blender and hit the button. I am so sorry you are hurting. I'm glad you're on a path toward healing. You deserve peace and happiness. Remember, healing isn't linear. You're going to have rough patches, but remember we are all having that issue. Thank you. It's just been so much. Gaslighting specifically. She paints this picture to her family and friends where she's able to act in a certain way and make me out to be the bad guy. But after talking with her mom, I believe her mom has BPD as well. When I found myself apologizing to her after she had abused me, I knew I had gotten so twisted around. It's shameful admitting it. If I talk to people the common response I get is man up, or have you lost your nuts, or something else. I'm a giant compared to her. Work out 5 days a week, tattoos, generally intimidating but this tiny woman can just trip me to pieces. So much of it is just because of me trying to hold on to what I thought we had or who I thought she was and thinking that I could help her. Other people could not even remotely understand the horrendous and bizarre behaviors of PWBPDs, let alone relate to our pain. Believe me, many of us here would agree that very few people would believe what we go through and willingly listen to us repeatedly. That's why this sub is godsend. As Shari Schreiber mentioned, it's difficult to imagine what it means to survive a blitz by borderline, unless you've been there. People think I'm crazy for staying. Her family thinks it's all my fault. If she gets upset and hurts me, her family always asks what did you do to make her do that to you? I have a hard time with the idea of leaving someone I vowed to take care of when they're clearly in a mental health crisis. I just have done everything I think I could possibly do. Does your BPD loved one wear themselves out? Learning about BPD. Any time my BPD so and I have any sort of conversation about divorce or working on our marriage, eventually my so starts falling asleep. It's like we've been talking about a hard emotional subject for a long period of time, one hour plus, and they've been trying to say manipulative things, self-deprecating, etc. and eventually it's like they're drunk. Heavy eyes, slurring words, needs to go lay down. Truly the end of the road. Rant. Today I guess it was the final day. My daughter wanted to play on mommy's tablet before nap. I got her set up with a coloring app. Leave her alone with the device for I guess too long because she's started opening other applications on the tablet. Usually she does it when she's bored of whatever she's playing and looks for other games. I go to close out the email app but before I get the chance, I see a PayPal notification. Curiosity I guess. I opened it and it showed a payment to her AP. 
She sent two payments totaling $165. She's at work. I asked her about it over the phone because we had talked earlier and she knew I was irritated but I hadn't explained why. She says I sent him money because he got sent to jail over a fight between him and his so. They were fighting over our, my WS and AP's, relationship and I felt responsible. I guess the money was for bail. After she said that, she sent me a series of texts saying. No. I told you my main reason for trying to sign the papers yesterday that I wasn't going to allow me to continue hurting you. It's been one single day since then and it's happened again. I have a list of four or five apartments close to work that are one bedroom. I'll move out once the papers are turned in so you can have the house and sleep in your bed again. I don't care who gets the chairs or the bookshelf. You chose which you want more. I'll fill out the financial papers when I get home after I leave work at 4. For the record, since you say you're always unsure where we leave off. No marriage counseling, just plain divorce. I'd still appreciate being able to work tomorrow if you'll allow it. And just to clarify again, when I said no by was not saying that the communication between me and AP is ongoing. The affair has been over. And so is marriage. I will be alone. Do not worry that your kids will have a new stepdad. I will be alone. So, I guess that's where my journey with r slash surviving infidelity ends. I guess maybe I'll post an update once the paperwork is submitted and then once again 91 days later. Presently I'm sad, but more than anything numb. I love my wife. I worked as hard as I could for 9 months on our marriage. I was always holding out hope that there was going to be some sort of come to Jesus moment where she realized and took accountability for her actions. Thank you for your support. I hope that those of you that read this and are working on reconciliation with your spouse is the absolutely best in your journey. I know there's a lot of hurt and at times negativity or maybe just realism posted on this sub, but don't let it discourage you from working on your marriage if you have a spouse that genuinely recognizes and is taking accountability for their actions. The best to all of you. Edit, forgot she had written a hate email that I'm sure was directed at me. I did not read it, but she obviously knew I was in her email. It started duck you and everything you stand for. If you were in front of me on your knees. And that's as far as the email preview showed because. I'm not clicking on or reading that shit. I wish my wife loved me man. Edit 2, there is some justice in the world. AP got arrested because he and his wife were fighting over the affair but he also had two outstanding warrants in other states. A buddy from my church is a correctional officer and ended up running his info a long time ago at the beginning of this. Looks like somebody forgot to register as a sex offender. An update to my update. The trilogy? Update. Today was hard. I know a lot of you PM me telling me I need to grow a backbone or whatever. Regarding that, shit is hard. I made a vow to a woman I love to spend my life with her and I have, at this point, explored every option before I end my marriage. With that said, I woke up today and took the divorce papers that we both filled out two days ago to the courthouse. She was there when I arrived. I talked to her in the car. I don't want to get divorced. I want to work on our marriage. I don't like being touched by you and have a hard time being around you, but I don't want our marriage to end, her words, summarized. I told her that if she had come here to stop me, telling me doesn't like being around me and so on is a sorry way of doing it. She said I came down here to stop you, but I. Before I cut her off and said you came down here to stop me, but now it's too late right? You would've, but now you won't. And then proceeded to go into the court building only to find out I was at the wrong one. New city, recent move equals confusion. An hour later I'm at the right building. She's there again. This time she's in my truck crying and telling me she's sorry and wants to work on our marriage. I tell her that I need to say a few things and then I'll hear what she has to say. I talk about how she claims she's been working on things, but clearly hasn't, since only managing to go a week, two weeks, without talking to the AP isn't working on things. 
If she wanted to save our marriage she'll actually commit to change because her actions don't match her words. She cuts me off a number of times and says in tears she's sorry to cut me off, but if I don't, you'll talk forever and you talking about all the bad stuff that has happened just feels like condemning me. I express that both my words and my actions over the last 9 months have been clearly the words and actions of forgiveness just hoping to restore our marriage. I start laying down my boundaries. She's mad. She says our marriage won't work if we have all these rules. I tell her these aren't rules, these are boundaries, and without them, any hope of recovery isn't going to work. I explain. My boundaries are simple, and there's only two. No more contact with AP. If he reaches out to you by email, text, insta, carrier pigeon, run into him at the store, no contact. She cut in to say she would do whatever it takes to prove she's not in contact with him anymore. My second boundary is that the emotional abuse needs to stop. No more saying you want to work on things, then at the first conversation that mentions any mistakes you've made, say this isn't working, we're getting divorced and chastise me for having emotions. At the mention of the second boundary, she said well this just isn't going to work then. Immediately stopped crying, got out of my truck and into her car. It's a freakish thing seeing someone that started out a conversation on their knees begging you while sobbing to not submit the divorce paperwork so suddenly stop crying and go full stone face. Long story short, I went into the courthouse, filed the paperwork, a few missing signatures led to me calling her to come back, and after everything was properly filled out, a paperwork has been filed. So, now begins the 91 day wait period. I'm disappointed, because again, I was hoping that she genuinely wanted to work on the marriage and this was the rock bottom, Hail Mary, final play of the game thing that made her come to her senses. It wasn't. In closing, today is a numb day but on the off chance that homeboy reads this or more so just to get it off my chest. Edit, there's a number of you that have felt compelled to call out my intentions here. There are, unfortunately, even more of you that have felt compelled to send quite a number of private messages beta cuck, spineless pussy, etc. This last year has been hard. We had a miscarriage, shortly after got pregnant and had a new baby, close personal death on both sides of the family. I understand a number of you won't agree with how long I hung in there trying to work on the marriage. My intro into being a BS was my wife telling me, I've been dissociating from reality. I'm scared. I need help. I've been having an affair. Yesterday it became physical and I had a panic attack. I need help. My worldview up until this point on mental health has been very limited. Previously, I believed depression in the clinical sense to be a myth. Anxiety is for people that can't handle real life. I believed it all to be a fabrication really. So suddenly I'm submerged into this world of therapy, trying to understand mental health, break down my former incorrect assumptions. I know now that my wife is in control of her decisions regardless of whatever potential condition she suffers from. I know that despite my best efforts to love and take care of my family through her mental health crisis, that she is not beyond taking accountability for her actions. My wife does this intentionally. This has been a two-fold learning curve. Hate on me all you want, but I've been doing the best I can. One of my greater fears in the beginning was that I would end my marriage and leave my spouse in the middle of a mental health crisis, needing help and support. But regardless of whatever potential condition she may or may not suffer, she is aware of her actions and is capable of holding herself accountable. Now that I've gotten a good education in things previously unknown, I am taking the appropriate course of action. Divorce papers have been filed. It's a freakish thing seeing someone that started out a conversation on their knees begging you while sobbing to not submit the divorce paperwork so suddenly stop crying and go full stone face. It's called theater, you should be thankful. You were treated to a live performance, fully staged for an audience of one. Front seat. Next time, bring popcorn. Yep, Bensil nails it again as usual. Think about all the other bull crap that you have believed hook, 
line and sinker from this person. You know like probably everything that came out of her mouth. Now like a silver cross that repels vampires, your divorce decree will be vanquishing this damn cheating slash betraying slash lying person out of your life. I'm glad to hear that you have decided to drop the crazy out of your life and move on. That's such an unsettling thing to witness. It makes you question every moment you once shared with that person, wondering what was real and what was acting. I had to read your previous post. I actually remember reading it when it was posted originally. The month by month one. Living with someone with BPD is very hard. One of the symptoms is making reckless decisions. I know because I'm 27 years. Dotto. My son has BPD with schizophrenia. By her words and actions she doesn't sound like she feels she did anything wrong. She sounds like she is dismissive of your feelings and does not want to have any accountability. She just wants you to stop talking about it. At least that is what I got. I know filing for divorce is hard. You are publicly admitting failure. That is hard on everyone. Not just you. You are not alone. Have you looked into support groups in your area? I was happy to see you are thinking about your children first and foremost. They matter and their feelings matter. I'm sure it was said but you may want to see a counselor. They will help you get your mind and feelings under control through this process. They can also help you to explain to the kids what is happening and why so they are not confused and upset. I know it doesn't feel like it now, but you will make it through this. It sucks. Every now and then over this time period I'll find her crying. My hope is always that she's crying because she's recognized the things that have happened and as soon as I ask her what's got her so sad, she'll come to me for comfort, seeking reassurance that we can still work on things. Usually she just ushers me away. On the rare occasion that she tells me what has her so upset, it's a disappointing answer. One time she told me she was crying because she was afraid everyone was going to look at her differently now. Another time, because I hadn't apologized to her yet for sending my pregnant wife to jail after she got physically violent. I cry slash cried for her because for the longest time I believed she just needed help getting back to herself. She cries for herself because she feels she's a victim when facing real world consequences for what she does to others. I only was able to, I guess, reach the place I'm in now. Making sure I'm setting and enforcing boundaries and letting go when she won't abide by then after going to therapy and actively being involved with people that care about me, my wife, and my family. If she continues to ask for reconciliation, and you decide to consider it, you need to tell her this very clearly, in order for you to rebuild trust with her, you need to be able to share your feelings about what she did whenever you need to, and she needs to be there, listen, and be supportive. This will probably make her feel guilty. If she wants to reconcile, she has to recognize that the guilt is coming from her, not from you. You are not speaking up with the goal of making her feel guilty. She needs to accept the feelings of guilt, and she can ask for your support in dealing with those feelings, but she can never, ever, even once ask you to stop making her feel that way. You aren't making her feel that way. That sounds amazing. I wish things had gone like that. Hard to believe that that's how it goes for some people after the last nine months. Today went the opposite. She had me agree to never talk about it again. Which is the final nail in the coffin. We hope you have enjoyed today's episode. Please comment, like and subscribe. Cheers. Have a wonderful day or night. Wherever you are.